uh, a meeting that we've called out of schedule, and I am very grateful uh, to members uh, uh, for coming. So, usual pre-meeting statements, fire alarm, we're not expecting a, I don't believe we're expecting a practice today, uh, so if you hear the alarm, it's for real. No smoking, toilets down the corridor, if you leave the meeting, uh, I don't think there's any uh, restricted papers today, but normally we keep those confidential. Recordings, we'll start recording as soon as the meeting is, uh, is over, uh, started <laughs> over. Uh, requests, uh, if there are any um, people who object to being uh, uh, filmed or whatever, please let me know. Um, mobile phones, we'll switch them off. So uh, I'm Captain <coughs> Lesbier, I'm chair of the meeting. We'll start the meeting now. You can record at your leisure. So the agenda has been circulated. And again, thank you very much to officers for pulling together the uh, report and uh, getting it to members. Um, uh, we've got um, preliminary matters, declarations of interest, if anybody has a declaration of interest. Again, a number of members couldn't be here today. Um, and so uh, we've uh, made up the numbers. Uh, the quorum is three, so we're uh, okay. Sure, just to, just to, to mention from myself and, and the perspective, obviously we are uh, relevant officers to, and our statutory roles within the authority, so just to bring that to your attention. We appreciate that. This is a constitutional matter. It is not about individual personalities. It's about uh, engrossing the changes in national legislation into our constitution, and that's the only purpose of this. So it has no, for this meeting, has no individual effect on any individual named within the authority, as far as I'm aware. Um, additional items of business, there's nothing additional to add to the agenda. This is an urgency committee. Um, the, the business of this committee will be confirmed by the next deliberative meeting, which is the um, community safety meeting. Thursday yeah. this week, and I'm proposing that we have a, 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 an urgent item on that agenda. It will also be an item to look at the membership of the audit committee, because a number of members have indicated to me that they're planning to not seek re-election or re-nomination, so our audit committee numbers, in terms of continuity of membership, would fall back. And we'll just look at that. Uh, so there's no items on this agenda which require exclusion of the press and public. So now we move on to item two, uh, authority statutory and relevant officers disciplinary procedures, pages 5 to 28. Ria, thank you for helping us out. Thank you, Chair. Members will recall the authority approving the adoption of the local authority standing orders regulations 2015 as detailed in Appendix A. Since its implementation of the 2015 regulations, further guidance has been issued with a national recognised model procedure which is applicable to statutory posts. Officers have reviewed current processes and it has become apparent that sufficient processes were not in place for the authority to be compliant with the 2015 regulations, nor to offer the support and or assistance to the relevant officers should it be required and this urgently needed to be rectified. The full detail of the new proposed process is contained within the draft disciplinary procedures for relevant officers in Appendix C. This is on page 21. As part of the proposed process, there would be a requirement to have an investigatory and disciplinary committee, referred to as an IDC, which would hear any initial allegations. It is proposed to members that this function is carried out by the Audit Committee, as detailed within draft, the draft terms of reference contained in paragraph 7 of the report. It is worth noting within those terms of reference, <coughs> this includes the power to appoint an in independent investigator if required, <coughs> the, de the details of which are contained within the procedure. Should this pro matter progress, and in accordance with the 2015 regulation and process, an independent panel would need to be created. <coughs> it is recommended to members that the independent panel, if approved, should consist solely of independent persons with a recommend recommendation of three, <coughs> although it should be noticed, noted the minimum requirement is two. This is because it will allow independent scrutiny, 
which will ensure member. <coughs> sorry, this will allow independent scrutiny while ensuring member involvement at every other stage. The authority currently has one appointed independent member. Authorisation is being sought to invite the appointed independent person to serve on the independent panel if it is created. If appointed, it should be noted as a co-opted member of the audit committee. There would be a conflict should um, the audit be acting as an IDC. <coughs> this is detailed within paragraph 12 of the report. In order to avoid any undue delay, under the 2015 regulations, it does permit the use of independent persons, both appointed directly by this authority, as well as those appointed by other authorities, and paragraph 14. On this matter, authorisation is being sought for the management officer or their relevant authorised deputy to write to colleagues across Merseyside as the local authorities <coughs> to create <coughs> sorry, a pool of independent persons for the purposes of relevant officer disciplinary procedures and the appointments to the independent panel will only be necessary as and when convened. In respect of the remuneration under the current member scheme of allowances, it would be applicable to, to those proposed to extend uh, would be applicable and it is proposed to extend this to any independent persons acting on the independent panel. This would also be proposed to extend to those independent persons, not just directly appointed by this authority, but those appointed by another authority. Standing Order 36 of the Constitution <coughs> would also require amending to reflect the new proposed procedure. As the disciplinary procedures currently apply to the three statutory posts within the organisation, as well as the Deputy Chief Fire Officer, <coughs> it is proposed to extend this to the Assistant Chief Fire Officer also to be consistent with the Principal Officers as detailed within paragraph 22 of the report. For ease, the full proposed changes to the Constitution are detailed in Appendix B. Also, the legal and financial implications are detailed within the report. And I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. Um, so that's a uh, tour de force of what we've got here. Uh, 2015 <coughs> regulation changes. This affects those staff which are on the gold book and on the purple book, um, uh, but specifically are in those um, special roles as nominated legal officers. So we understand what all this is about. Um, uh, I think it's very interesting and a good idea to try and utilise independent members from the other authorities as well. I think as a basic idea, that's just a good thing to do. I said this before back at SEFTA, you know, there needs to be more integration with some of our personnel functions across the whole of Merseyside. Uh, there's, there's useful things that can be done there. So this is just by way of putting in place, engrossing, as I said before, the change national regulation to apply to our, those uh, gold book and special officers nominated officers, and um, it's relatively straightforward, non-controversial to that extent. Are there any questions, colleagues? Just one uh, question, Chair. On page 7, where it talks about the appointment of the independent person must be, laid, must be made at least 20 working days before the meeting. I'm just wondering why the figure 20, is that, is that laid down? That's yeah. Yes, yeah, that is. That's, that's the normal. Yeah, that's yeah. part of the regulation. Yeah. yeah, okay then. Yeah, thank you, Chair. And, um... So, our independent person, if we've been through this, our independent person, Anthony Boyle in this case, um, is a member uh, of, I'm possibly wrong voting, of the uh, audit committee proper. Now, the audit committee proper will continue to meet, it has business, mm -hmm. uh, but when it sits as a, uh, you know, in a disciplinary capacity, obviously, he or whoever is the independent person at some time in the future would have to not so that they did not become in, involved in, in the first stage. We understand how this works from our own authorities. You know, it, it's only right and proper to have a two-stage. The difference here is that whilst for every other officer <coughs> we took the member involvement out for these statutory officers, the 2015 regulations say that the final <coughs> decision belongs to the authority itself. This is to protect 
protect statutory officers um, from arbitrary uh, disciplinary action. So, are we all agreed on that? Those in favour, if you'd indicate. Four, thank you. Any against? No, there's no none against. So, thank you very much. Those are the only items of business. I declare the meeting closed. If, uh, if members of the Chief would stay back behind, and we'll just discuss the next processes. <laughs>